Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Run. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We're going to have a great show for you today. Today, we have some good stuff, man, some really good stuff. Anyhow, how are you guys doing today? Welcome aboard Yvette Avery Herod, our union specialist, our union protection agent, and all the magic that goes with that. Folks, there are a lot of you that are on already. Make yourself known so that I can say Hello, ABQ says, I'm watching from Twitch, and Michael Rudnan, ABQ, of course, have the initial word of the day, and it starts this way, Trump speech, Trump free speech social media sites plans to use AI to automatically censor some posts. I find it hilarious that the people complaining about free speech rights will block what they consider hateful content they'll label as spam and come in from parody accounts, as well as sexually explicit content, which would make their site even more restrictive than Twitter. The satire writes itself, they are not against censorship, they want to be censors. This all comes before the launch of the site. What a joke. Now, what's the solution to fixing social media? Regulate social media on the internet as if it is the new public sphere and open source all algorithms. I am with you. I'm absolutely with you, my friend. Second item says, Neil Young's music is being removed from Spotify after the rock star call for streaming platform to choose between him and podcaster Joe Rogan after accusing Rogan of COVID misinformation. Spotify has chosen poorly. However, this is about expected if you take the profit motive into account. You know, Stuff about COVID and the misinformation about COVID is such a money maker. And the thing about it is everything that you hear me talk about, I mean, it, it is like a broken record. Everything you hear me talk about capitalism gives, it, it gives exactly the reason why you cannot blame Spotify as a corporation for making the choice that they made. I go back to Milton Friedman, the daddy of capitalism. The purpose of corporations is not social good. The purpose of corporations are not to do what is right. The purpose of corporations is not to say, it would be nice if we took care of all the stakeholders. That's not the purpose of corporations. The purpose of corporations is uh, and, and, uh, it's to enhance the value of their stocks, is to maximize the value of their shareholder. And that has absolutely nothing to do with doing what is right. Folks, if you're listening to me right now, please remember if you just started, please remember to up chart, give me that thumbs up. Let folks know about us. Let folks know what we're doing. Let folks know that, hey, this is where you need to be. That is what we need to do, folks. Let's make, make sure people know that anyhow so go ahead and click that uh that thumbs up uh other one from michael rudnan said uh did i turn off the stove did i turn off the stove michael i'm scared to read the rest of it but i'm going to i'm going to did i turn off the stove yes but maybe not the gas now research finds that gas stoves emit methane a potent greenhouse gas even when turned off and adds to the debate over electrifying homes. There were more than 40 million gas stoves in the US households in 2015, and homes and buildings account for an estimated 13% of America's greenhouse gas emissions. I live in a rented apartment, don't have a choice for my kitchen appliance, but the next time my gas stove gets replaced, we'll ask for an electric one, system problems bigger than individual contributions, but I still feel need to do something about my own share. You know what I mean? That's a difficult choice when you look at how electricity is generated, right? I, I, I am I'm a very much a, 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 an environmentalist. But let, let's, let's postulate a question. How soon is our electrical generation plants going to be all, all electric, meaning solar and all that wind and all of that? Maybe you should have the electric stove. You're doing the right thing. When it's time to replace your stove, you replace with electricity. The question is, could everybody in your building replace their stove with an electric stove? Will there be the electrical capacity there? All these things we have to make sure when we're transitioning is done correctly. Otherwise, 
If there's a hiccup during the transition, it'll hurt the entire cause. So all of this has to be done in concert. You know, um, I've, I've reminded to why it is that Build Back Better, I think it's Build Back Better, uh, that has all the electrical stations throughout the, the several hundred thousand electrical stations around the country. And the reason why is if we are going to mandate that people drive electrical cars, we have to ensure that it's almost if, as easy as it is to get up with your gas right now. So I am with you 100%. Let's make sure it's done right. Let's pass Build Back Better. Very important. Okay, progressives, let's see what else I have here. Uh, progressives to Biden. Force Pharma to share vaccine recipes globally. Congressional Progressive Caucus wrote, the longer the global pandemic is allowed to run rampant, the more violent variants will continue to threaten health and economic uh, well-being across the planet. Considering the infection rates by natural immunity, it's become clear that the only way to stop the pandemic is herd immunity through vaccination, Unless vaccines are widely available globally, we are never going to get herd immunity. Big Pharma's profit motive is at fault, and it is up to government to regulate their greed. Exactly. Government has to do the job. Why? Because it is simple. The job of the corporations is to pill for you. That's their, that's their job. Milton Friedman laid out the marching orders all along. Not social values, nothing. Their sole purpose is to maximize the, the, the growth, wealth of you know whom. Okay, Eric Hayes says, let's sit this sink in, man. That stabs a police dog gets 50K bot. Oh, boy. Tiala Wilson says, PDR people, how are you? We're doing just fine. Neil Young, so woke, he canceled himself. Nice to see intimidation didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. Nice to see that call, that Grogan is getting a whole lot of people killed. So let's see. Uh, do I like the wokeness of Grogan, which is that's what it is, or the wokeness of Paul Young? Paul Young, thank you so kindly. Uh, let let there are a lot of other places for your music, and not only that, it's not like you need the money anyway. Melanie Keelan says good evening, Paul, and she's here with us. Eric Hay says, guess that the mean billionaires like Bezos shouldn't help people like providing free schools. Is this good? And are they not trying to do good to the community? Please. Is something bad there like constantly preach that the billionaire people are rich or generally bad? Billionaires are generally psychopaths. And I'll use that as an absolute statement. And I want to ask you something. If I, Eric Hayes, if you're walking down the street and you have $1,000 in your pocket, and I slowly walk by you, and without you knowing, I take that $1,000 away from you. And I take that $1,000 away from all these people that I see walking around. And then as these people are in despair, they're, oh my God, I am broke. I no longer have any money. I no longer have the things that I need. And then I come around and say, hey, here's $100. I did good. Here's a hundred dollars. I did good. Here's a hundred dollars. I did great. But how did I get the money that I'm imparting to you now? I stole it. I took it from you. That is what we don't understand. Corp the corporate structure takes more than their share. Why? We can prove it. If, if you work hard, and that corporation makes billions and they only give you a piece of it. But all of you together made it. And those investors, the people who, they're stakeholders too. The investors are stakeholders. The workers are stakeholders. The corporate executives are stakeholders. But the ones that profit are the corporate executives and the small amount of shareholders. Hmm. They get the money and then they decide, I'll be nice. I'll be a philanthropist. I will, re, I will redistribute all that money that this economic system allowed me to take from you. You see the difference in thought process? You see what you learned, what the Heritage Foundation has taught you, what the Powell Manifesto has taught you is how to think. You need to think that that guy who invested his capital 
deserve more than that guy who runs the risk of breaking his, his arm as he build the Boulder Dam. Okay? The reason I use Boulder Dam is that's what it used to be called, right? It used to be called in the Grand Canyon, you know? The Boulder Dam. Yeah. A lot of people used, got killed building it, but the corporatists who profited from it, oh, they, are, they took the risk. No, 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 no. That guy who, uh, for you, Eric Hayes, you live in Texas. All those people that live down there in Pasadena that are breathing in the benzene, that whose water is affected by the pollution on the ground. And then the corporation doesn't want to give them health care, but, but somehow one of them says, ah, I am going to donate money to a fund so these people can get health care. And everybody say, oh, clap, clap, clap. The corporation gave them money for health care. And then you say, oh, my God. You are the ones who threw the benzene in the air. You are the ones who did all of that. And now you're giving me back some of the money that you stole from me. Folks, let's learn. Let's not live through the indoctrination of all that was taught to us over the years. Let's not. Okay. Let's see, Daniel Lado says, is that Daniel Lado there? No, 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 no. Okay, we have. Not, not soon at all. You can wait till the wind blows to cook. <laughs> oh my God, you'll never learn, right? Back in store is the answer to that. Back in store. The, the, te the technology is this. You have a lot of intermittent forms of energy, wave energy, wind energy, solar energy. And the next thing that you do is storage. And there are many forms of storage. You can pump water into a reservoir that will be uh, unloaded into turbines at the time that isn't. That's a battery. Wave energy is generally pretty constant. As far as wind is concerned, you can store it in, in very heavy duty batteries, or you can store it in a lot of different forms. Back in store is the next big technology. Back in store means saving it when you have excess energy and when it's needed, you have it to let go. It's not rocket science, that part at all. All right, how about mandating a fair price and not government rebates of 12K for an 80K price EV car? Why not? Think about all the, the, the benefits that the oil companies are getting right now. Let's take away those subsidies and give it to the electric cars. Oh, yeah. Daniel says, government can't regulate its own greed and you want to regulate everything else. Actually, Daniel, you have a point about that. A uh, part of the government wants people them to still be able to do stocks. You're right. Very evil. I agree with you, um, Daniel Ado. So let's let's go elect people who will, will oblit obliterate what Nancy Pelosi and others say it's okay. Let's let's elect the right people. Norman Reynolds is here with us. Welcome aboard, Norman. One, two, plus one, two. Yes, I know. I got it. Michael Rodney says, May, hey, Eric Hayes, cool. We have a shared viewpoint. I'd be fine with regulating used car dealerships. We already have lemon laws, but there's more too. Report of 10K to 20K dealer markups now common due to vehicle shortage. Shopping for a new or used car, be prepared to pay as much as $20,000 more than MSRP for a popular model. Daniel Ledo says, activist journalists are generally narcissists. Okay. You want to call me a narcissist? Amazing. Very few people would think that about me. They'll say, oh man, you're kind of so self-deprecated. All right. Eric Hayes says, Egberto. You are so woke today. Selected reading of things. Thanks for the fairness, bud. I didn't selectively read what you said. I just interpreted exactly what you said and just showed you what happens with the permutations of what you said, my brother. Eric also said, Berto, can you not buy shares? Yes, I can buy shares if I could afford to, but most of the people who work for these corporations make so little that they couldn't even invest in stock options in their own companies. Tiala Wilson, welcome aboard, my dear friend. She says, people just refuse to stop spending money with them. I don't even make a lot of money, but I do not shop at place like Walmart. I'm going to, Tiala Wilson, I've had that fight in my head for a long time. Should I shop at Walmart? Should I beg my wife to stop shopping at Walmart? And there are times I used to say yes. But then I said, I started to say, no, this is not... In, if you could amass enough people like you to simply bankrupt the, the Walmarts of the world, the pilferers of the world, that would be great. But you can't. And what happens then is the following, Tiala. While I'm telling you, until we get something systemic, I don't want you to stop shopping at Walmart. And let me tell you why, Tiala. Because 
if you shop at Walmart because you can get some stuff cheaper, the excess, the money that you don't spend at Walmart, you can support policies to bring the policies that will bring Walmart up into the, into the, into the fold. What do I mean? The right wing, they're shopping at Walmart, so they have excess money that they can invest in right wing things. In other words, they can give Rush Limbaugh, well, Rush Limbaugh is dead now. They can give Sean Hannity. They can give all these right wing rags, right wing websites, right wing talk shows can get the monies that they got from buying cheap at Walmart. But because you are doing the honorable thing and shopping at places that don't do the bad things Walmart do, you don't have the excess capital to give those progressive organizations that could use that excess capital to ensure that Walmart doesn't exist. So what we get by us taking that stance too often is that, oh my God, we're shooting ourselves in the foot because that excess money that people of lower means could use to change the system is not able to do so. Let me continue what you say. Who sell things to people that work for them knowing that they have for months to buy. Yeah, you're right, Tiola. And that's why I said I have, I've had that war with myself for a very long time. And I think I came back and said, hey, babe, shop at Walmart. Because right now, the, uh, with, with the income drop that we have as well, it's cheaper, right? And again, is it the dishonorable thing to do? I cannot say that. There are some people that's all they can afford to do. And, it's all, and, and also for those who can afford better but can use that delta to help others, yes, I say that. All right, Norman Reno says, I would love that we examine the goals of activist journalists like Egberto to educate and support the middle class and the poor against the pushback and goals of the plutocracy and the labels by those who attack them. Thank you so kindly, Senor Reynolds. Daniel Ado says, let me guess, you bought Egberto's book on Amazon. Yeah, I would hope so. But, you know, you can still buy the book from me directly. I can, I'll can. i put the link in there later. All right. Uh, Eric says, Rudnan, I am not shopping for a car. And if I was, would not do retail, it is called find another way, dude. When there are monopolies, Eric Hayes, which is what we talk about a lot, there are generally not other ways. Please, people, please understand what we're saying. ABQ says, I buy local unless if I need something in bulk or can't find here, then buy online. Yep, I got you. All right, let's see. Uh, Rush passed away in February last year, and now his show is still running smoothly. You should listen. Uh, you should listen. It. It is good. I used to listen to Rush to learn what I need not I, I needed to listen to, to Rush to learn all the, why a lot of people are so misinformed. And I got it. I understood it. Rush was very good at what he did. Tiala Wilson says, okay, I feel what you're saying. If you need to buy food from Walmart, then sure. Toilet paper, sure. Basic needs, very understandable. At least stop buying their big ticket items. If you can get a big ticket item, get it from somewhere else. Hey, girl, I am with you. You know, it's important, Tiala. We all the things that we have to do, progressives have to do, we have to do in a calculated manner to move the country forward. Anyway, let's get with what the program is about today. I want you to listen to uh, El Senor Breyer. I mean, he, he puts our de democracy, he tells us that our democracy is in danger in, in a certain kind of a way. I want you to listen to this. And then we'll go ahead and take it on the other side. Here we go. Justice Pryor, on behalf of all the American people, I want to thank you and your family and your family for your tremendous service to our nation. And I'm going to yield the floor to you, Mr. Justice. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. That is terribly nice. And uh, believe me, I hold it right here. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I, I thought about what I, I might say to you. And I, I'd like to say something I enjoy is talking to high school students, grammar school students, college students, even law school students. And, and they'll come around and ask me, what, 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 is the, what is it you find particularly meaningful about your job? What sort of gives you a thrill? And that's not such a tough question for me to answer. Uh, it's the same thing. 
day one almost <laughs> up to day I don't know how many <laughs> but but the the what what I say to them is look I sit there on the bench and after we hear lots of cases and after a while the impression it takes a while I have to admit but the impression you get is you know as you well know this is a complicated country there are more than 330 million people. And my mother used to say it's every race, it's every religion, and she would emphasize this, and it's every point of view possible. And uh, it's a kind of miracle. When you sit there and see all those people in front of you, you, you uh, the people that are so different in what they think, and yet they've decided to help solve their major differences under law. And when the students get too cynical, I say, go, go look at what happens in countries that don't do that. And that's there. I can't take this around in my job. But people have come to accept this Constitution, and they've come to accept the importance of a rule of law. And I want to make another point to them. I want to say, look, uh, of course people don't agree, but we have a country that is based on human rights, democracy, and so forth. But I'll tell you what Lincoln thought, what Washington thought, and what people today still think. It's an experiment. It's an experiment. That's what they said. And Joanna paid each of our grandchildren a certain amount of money to memorize the Gettysburg Address. And the, the reason, the reason that, that, that what we want them to pick up there and what I want those students to pick up, if I can remember the first two lines, is that four, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought up, uh, created upon this uh, uh, here a new country, a country that was dedicated uh, to uh, liberty and the proposition that all men are created equal, conceived in liberty. Those are his words. And dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. He meant women too. And uh, we are now engaged in a great civil war to determine whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. See, those are the words I want. To see an experiment. And that's what he thought. It's an experiment. And I found some letters that George Washington wrote where he said the same thing. It's an experiment. That experiment existed then because even the liberals in Europe, you know, they're looking over here and they say it's a great idea in principle, but it'll never work. Uh, but we'll show them it does. That's what Washington thought. And that's what Lincoln thought. And that's what people still think today. And I say, well, I want you, and I'm talking to the students now. I say, I want you to pick just this up. It's an experiment that's still going on. And I'll tell you something. You know who will see whether that experiment works? It's you, my friend. It's you, Mr. High School students. It's you, Mr. College student. It's you, Mr. Law School students. It's us, but it's you. It's that next generation and the one after that. My grandchildren and their children. They'll determine whether the experiment still works. And of course, I am an optimist, and I'm pretty sure it will. Does it surprise you that that's the thought that comes into my mind today? I don't know, but thank you. We, I mean, it's, it is amazing. Listen to what he said. What he said is in danger. And the people that will realize that danger or though it's not us per se right away, but those that are coming. And that is what we have to protect. We have to protect that democracy. And that is what cinema and mansion and every single Republican senator has failed to do. They have allowed for the potential collapse of democracy in America and allow a corporatocracy to create a, fas a fascist state where the oligarchy, the plutocrats, are in control. When I say in control, I mean undemocratic control. We have to understand what is really happening out here. Okay, let's see. Uh, Eric says, if more was done to promote programs like this by the people that gripe all the times, like James, politicians, and others, and put that energy in developing community programs for jobs, childcare, medical, etc., this world would be better. You know, that is what progressives want to do. 
That is what progressives have been working on for decades. It is Republicans who say, we don't want midnight basketball to take those kids that otherwise would be out uh, in the streets without supervisions doing the bad things. We don't want to feed kids in, in, uh, in elementary school and so forth, because uh, even though we know that it does better to their brains and make them more learned, we don't want to invest in, 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 in taking care of utilities that take leads out of pipes and all of that to make sure we don't create a generation of, of people who cannot learn. We want to spend the money to do exactly those things, Mr. Hayes. We want community programs. We want all those things. But you know, you don't need the government to do everything. No, you don't need the government to do everything, but the government needs to be there to do what should not be coerced into. In other words, some people say, let the church do it. Sure, let the church do some of these things. If the church can prove that in the process of doing it, it's not going to coerce or or become a, uh, I forgot what the word means, when uh, when they, when they coerce you into their religion by giving, offering you things. No, I rather personally it be done by we the people. Now, if we the people want to contract some of it to the church, want to contract some of it to private in things to kind of because these people are within the community. Oh, fine, not a problem. It's less efficient, but it's okay because we may lose some people, so I can deal with that. But it's a, it, it is a selfishness of otherwise. Hi, Coop333. Welcome aboard, my friend. Uh, he says, Russia, good, absurd, good for spreading right-wing propaganda and dividing Americans. Maybe that's true. Bruce says, so don't kill capitalism balanced with democracy. I don't think there is a better combo. We just need to continuously improve. The problem we have today is that people are selfish and elected officials can't not represent their electoral for money without penalty. I want to explore that, Bruce, because uh, theoretically speaking, I think all our leftists in this room agrees with absolutely everything that you just said. I'm sorry that the volume is low. I don't know why. I just I just tried a little inc a gain. Tell me if that gain worked at all. But here's what here's a problem. Uh, right now we're talking about terminology, Bruce. Um, I believe in free enterprise. Free enterprise. That guy who owns the, the bakery, that's your business. You profit from that business perfectly, all that good stuff. You pay your taxes. Everybody has uh, health care that paid out of this one big pot that all of us put taxes in. That way, that guy who owns the bakery is not at a disadvantage from hiring good people from the corporation who has the power of scale to buy uh, cheap insurance at the same, you know, that that forces that baker to have to have lousy, not lousy, but employees that, you know, that otherwise are always looking for a job at a, the next open at a corporation. So that those are the things we have to look at. What we have is a structure, a capitalist structure that's biased towards a corporation. While if we had structures that said, Healthcare is covered. Energy, to some extent, is covered. I don't know exactly what the procedure would be, but these essence essentials of life is covered, so that the person who needs the person who decides, I want to create a restaurant. I want to have the same. I have. I want to be able to pull from the same pool of people Exxon can pull from, because they're not worried about their healthcare. They're not worried about any of those issues, right? How does the phrase capitalism versus free enterprise inhibits that? Capitalism by design, by definition, right, is about the maximization of the profits of the individual and the, uh, and the person. Now, you can say, well, we can regulate it. I agree with that. We can regulate it. Capitalism can be free or rather is free enterprise for everybody else, right? Because in as much as Corporation A is divided into several stocks, etc., all of us have equal opportunity to all of it because, again, things like healthcare, things like energy, things like the basics are covered. And, and, and that people don't, you know, but as soon as we start talking about that, they start saying, you're just a communist. A lot of people just don't get it, Bruce. So what I'm saying, Bruce, is, I think we are on the same uh, the same thing, but terminologies are the issues. Terminologies 
the issues. Bruce says, what would it take to make a voice exchange show? I struggle. No, I'm working on that. I, you know, the, well, I'm supposed to be working on that. I got to be honest. I haven't spent a lot of time uh, working on it. I, I just got onto the PNB at KPFT, which means, hey, I'm part owner of the Pacifica Network now for zero money. In other words, they don't pay, but we, we do it. But um, but I'm going to work on that so that you can call in. I, I need to get something like that working. Bear with me till I get that going. I, I hear you about the typing, brother. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Hi, Coop says, thank you for such intelligent comment. Thank you so I much mean, to Armour Good Mullen. Thank you so kindly. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have, uh, Hi, Coop says my volume is a little, sorry, Hi, Coop, turn it up a little on your side. He's saying it is a danger right now because the current structure and rule of law is the key. Maywood says to Eric Hayes, the point is, Eric, that we try to create and run these programs with and through the government that is exactly what and why we have a government. Also remember, we are the government, not some abstract entity in distance or some all powerful force, but us. And that is the magic of what the right likes to do. They first have to isolate we the people from the government. And as soon as you can use that government as a, a, a as that 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 thing that you can flog all the time then you can hurt it but if you know government is we the people everything is all right uh let's see i, I wish i i i don't know why the volume is so low but let me see if i can get it a little bit closer to me and hopefully uh oh, hopefully that will improve tell me if that is any better folks is that volume turning the mic like that any better let me know i'll i'll, I'll hope that that did it Bruce uh, Pollard, capital, from, from Michael Rudden. Bruce Pollard, capitalism is an economic system. Democracy is political. The two are more often in conflict than synergy. Exactly, and that's because corporations are not democracies, right? By, they're inherently not democracy. And Milton Friedman explains it all. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Egberto, I am tasking about the Bessos Foundation. Talking about the Bessos Foundation. Okay. Haiku says, hey, he just wants everyone else to do it. He doesn't want to participate. Bruce says, I know that MR, but can they balance each other? Uh, not, by, not by the definition given by Milton Friedman. Not by that definition. By that definition, I think it's problematic. Free market enterprise left alone from the freaking government. I'd like you to define the market, but one of the, you, you, a lot of people don't realize it till they get bitten, right? Hayes, but at the same time, the inflation is a government fault? No, government doesn't cause inflation. You know, it's, it's amazing how when, when inflation comes, they can blame the government, and when deflation comes, they can blame the government, right? It, it is amazing. Inflation, in, when there isn't a real shortage, is theft. And that's what we have right now, corporate theft. Corporate theft of the people. That's what we have right now. Haikoop says, we the people, Mr. Hayes. The government is us. Thank you, Haikoop. You, you get the picture. All right, ABQ says, Haikoop 33, the right wing blames government printing money for inflation, not recognizing that inflation doesn't happen until demand exceeds supply. Exactly. And we are not at the point where demand has exceeded supply. It's not there. It is not there. By the way, Tom C., I sent you an email. Your blog is up at Politics Done Right with your poem and the little piece that we did at Egberto, Ask Egberto Anything. So that video is there, Brother Tom C., along with your poem for all to see. Please remember to share it so that others get a chance to see it. I just had to rotate the mic a bit. That was my fault. Hey, what can I say? Haikoop says EW as well. Apparently, the, the, the voice is louder. What it also means is that I'm going to have to go ahead and pre post process the, the audio after I, I repost this. Tiala Wilson says the same as well. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Eric Hayes says corporations are not government. Totally different. So why compare to democracy? Exactly. You just answered the question, Eric. And that is why we need government. Corporations are inherently a dictatorship, right? The CEO says what he wants and he go does it. A dictatorship. I'm glad you're getting it, but you have to, now that you get the independent parts, brother Hayes, put it together. Put it together. 
Haikoop says, name one, Mr. Hayes, I'll wait. All right, we have another video. Um, before that, though, E2247, welcome aboard. Uh, he says, any questions? Insurrection, not too serious, but it is quite exciting. Cynical, 22? <laughs> Come on, stop it, E2247. All right, let's go ahead and play our second video. This one is very important. I want you to take a listen to this because AOC has the message for moderates and what and that the decline in El Señor Biden's rating right now is really caused by whom again? Los, Mole Los Moleres. Here it is. Justice Pryor, on behalf of all the American people, our Build Back Better plan is paid for. It doesn't increase the deficit. And maybe the best news of all, it will actually help alleviate inflation. The Build Back Better plan lowers prices for families and gets people working. The president met with some of the nation's top CEOs today as he tries to salvage major components of his stalled agenda. Still with us, New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, Congresswoman, what is your reaction when you hear some in your party, some in the media, already blaming the left for the midterms defeat that seems to be coming your party's way and for Biden's low approval ratings. What do you say to their argument that Joe Biden went too far left in his first year? He was too ambitious. Or as your House colleague Abigail Spanberger has said, nobody elected him to be FDR. Well, you know, I think folks like that, uh, what they don't want to admit is that Biden has governed pretty much exactly the way they have they have asked him to. But the problem is that the way they have asked him to govern has been to slow down, not do too much. And we are now seeing the political consequences of not directly improving people's lives quickly. Well, here's the thing. I can't point to one major agenda where progressives or this so-called left sidelined the of the party in some dramatic fashion um, that can lead to this. I mean, the moderate end of the party has received everything that they have wanted from President Biden, including President Biden as the nominee himself. They got their president. They got their agenda. They got their sequence. They got their infrastructure plan with no BBB. They got all of it. And I can't really point to any real substantive or serious or intellectually rigorous argument as to anything that the progressive wing has done, aside from supporting President Biden, oftentimes yeah. more than the moderate ring of, ring, wing of the party has um, in a way that, that yeah. could lead to sinking poll numbers. There's just, you know, when you don't change people's lives, people get upset and we can improve people's Last lives. We can forgive student loan debt and we can improve his poll numbers while we're at it. Yeah, last time I checked, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema were not self-styled socialists. Uh, what do you want to see happen to Build Back Better now? Is it dead? Because last night, former Obama advisor David Pluff told me on this show that the Dems now basically have to just give Manchin what he wants, put what he wants in it, lose the rest. If you have to break it into chunks, do it. But you pass it and you run on whatever gets passed in November. Do you agree with that strategy? Oh, the thing, the complication with that is that that's already been done with Build Back Better. Uh, Manchin issued really a laundry list of requests and demands uh, and changes to what he wanted to build back better. The first, you know, that was the story of 2020. Um, he wanted it decoupled. He wanted it shrunk. He wanted it changed. And he was essentially catered to throughout this entire process. The issue that we have is that every day, Joe Manchin, Senator Manchin wakes up, he has a different demand and he wants to start over from scratch every single day. And so that is a quite difficult uh, position to work with. You know, this idea of just give him what he wants, he has been given everything that he wants. And so I believe that what the president, uh, you know, yeah. some avenues, not just the president, but the party, that we really need to explore what are the alternative uh, measures to, to either bring Senator Manchin to the table, or how do we start exploring elements of, of, Biden's agenda that can move forward without, um, w you know, without Senator Manchin. And that is what's so important. How can we move it forward? Because the truth of the matter is, uh, to put it bluntly, we really can't. But, 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 I think the way you win the election in 2022, this year, is to point out what the deficiencies are 
and then go out there and campaign for it. For those who are thinking that, oh, the big loss for Democrats, including in Georgia, where they're sort of behind in the polls right now, is baked in. And they're not behind by a bunch. For a state like Georgia, the amount that they're behind is negligible, really. Uh, <laughs> what I find ironic is Warnock and Herschel Walker are in a virtual tie. We have a, I mean, we have a, a, I, I don't like to be negative, but well, it's, it's just hard to believe that those two are, um, in a virtual tie. It's just hard to believe, but, but, it is time. Uh, I spoke to somebody recently. I don't quite remember who it was. Actually, I do remember. It was a local politician running for Congress last night. Um, she contacted me, and I called her up last night after I was done with my with some of my work. And she said, I am going to run. There, there is this red district, the new district in Texas. I am running for it, Egberto. And here's the deal. I asked her, how are you going to campaign? Are you going to campaign as a progressive? And she, initially she just said, yes. And I said, but are you, I, I trust that what you're going to campaign about is going there and tell people what you intend to do for them. And she said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And the reason I'm, I asked the questions that way is, if we go into these, if we go into 2022, first telling people what we are going to do why much of it was yet to be done because of obstructionists like all the Republicans and two Democratic senators, but we intend to do this. If we do that, we win. But let me tell you, what we cannot allow is for this election not to be fought on the terms of what we are going to do for you. Because I tell you what happens if we don't fight it on the terms of what we are going to do for you. It's, it's important for you to understand. I, I, I want you to see something very, very important here. I hope I, 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 hope I brought that in. Uh, looks like I didn't bring that in. Let's close that out. I can't get, I need, I, I, I need you to, there, there's a, there's a, there's a video that I thought I, I had already processed. I can't find it right now, but it was an ad that Fox News and all these guys are doing. It. I see it on, on my YouTube TV. I was shocked. I was completely shocked. I, I, I thought I had it here. Let me, let me see if I can find it as I'm speaking to you because it's an important ad for you to understand what these people are doing. And it seems like I may not have that ad out here. Let me see if I accidentally threw it into uh, the show stuff elsewhere. Well, 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 I didn't. Apparently, I didn't get it processed in time. I wish I did. I'll show you that video tomorrow. But what it shows is that they don't intend to fight on policy. In fact, they asked, they asked Mitch Romney, what are Republicans running on? And Mitt Romney says, let me get back to you on that. I mean, isn't, it, isn't that an easy answer? We're running on making sure Americans get the things that they need. That's a simple answer. He has to get back with you because he has to pre- and post-process the information, right? That's what he has to do. Um, anyway, continuing with what we have on the screen. AOC for speaker, according to E2247. Haiku says, AOC can't reach you, Hayes. She's too far above your pay grade. Melanie Keelan says, I hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Melanie. Haiku says, ha, ha, ha to Eric Hayes. But Michael Rennes says, if Biden really wanted to pass Build Back better, Biden could have asked the DOJ to look into Manchin's investment into his daughter's big pharma EpiPen scandal and see if there's any criminal charges. Get him out of office and let cinema stand alone with her 8% approval rate. Now, here's the deal. The thing about it is cinema doesn't care. Cinema likely isn't even going to run for Senate again. Cinema is already paid off. So she doesn't care. She did her job. The, the plutocracy makes her and have its tentacles in both parties. So therefore, those were the stooges. They got two, they got two for the price of one. Okay, by, if, if Manchin doesn't do it, we got cinema. If cinema doesn't do it, we got Manchin. But hey, we got lucky. Both of them did it. So we got to pay them both. 
Norman Reynolds says, Michael, we do not want the executive branch to dictate stuff to the DOJ, right? No, we don't. All right, let's see. Uh, Biden says, let's see, she doesn't want to work with anyone. She wants it her way only. That's not true. That's what Fox tells you. You go ask Republicans who are in meetings with AOC. They say AOC is the most prepared person that attends any of these meetings, folks. Any of the meetings, AOC is the most prepared and ready to go. Not my words. Republicans say that. Um, let's see what else we have. Tom C. says, Egberto, thank you so much for posting my poem, Vanilla Island, on your blog site. Still getting questions from my friends and relatives who struggle with its meaning or its truth. I think, I think they're struggling with it because it tells them too much, Tom. Like I mentioned in the video, I said, willful ignorance is a form of, well, a lot of people suffer from willful ignorance, but also willful ignorance is a sort of protection, right? You know, um, my daughter sent me a text right uh, earlier today. I don't know where she found it, but let me see if I can pull it up. And I should have posted it on the screen, but I don't have it right now. Maybe uh, let me see if I can pull that real big and then I'll put it. I'll actually show you on the. I'm gonna read it first. It says the following. And when I saw it, I, you know, I was like, this young girl is perfect. She said the following, uh, let's see. Uh, this is what she says. Jessica Hullick asked my nine-year-old how she felt reading this book as a white person. The book was the story, pro the, the, the 1619 Project Born on the Water. All right? So her daughter is reading it. Her white daughter is reading it. And she said, ask my nine-year-old how she felt reading this book. As a white person, she said, I think the only white person that feel bad or mad or uncomfortable reading about the stuff that white people did in history are the people who want to do it again. Stop banning books. And then, of course, she also tags uh, Jones. Here is the, here I'm, I'm pu putting it on the screen since I, I wasn't fast enough to do it before. So here is that. I want you guys to see this tweet. You can go look it up as well and maybe retweet it. And let, let's go ahead and retweet this woman's tweet. I'm going to retweet it as well. And I'm going to put, I'm actually probably going to write a blog about it because I think just those small amount of words are so powerful, what that little girl had to say. Anyhow, it is that time for me to play my video, for me to do my ask and then finish up with one little small commentary. So let's go. Here it is. I'm Egberto Willis, as host of Politics Done Right, a progressive radio media show on Pacifica Networks, KPFT 90.1 FM Houston, that engages all ideologies. I found that our political angst isn't mostly ideological. There is a well-designed effort by many in power to control us. If we are at each other's throats, we are less likely to demand our economic and local wishes. In that light, I wrote three books. I wrote the first one titled, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom, to describe the entire economy in a manner we can all understand. It highlights why it was designed to pill for most as it empowers a few, the chosen. The second book, titled, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, Take It to the Next Level. After understanding how the system pilfers, it is incumbent that we can speak to our peers to empower a change. The third book, How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from those who rigged it gives us a place to land after learning about our economy that is dysfunctional for most and learning how to engage the other side we point out what would make an economy that works for all each book stands on its own but together they provide the full picture please consider getting one or more you will undoubtedly learn be entertained and help us continue the mission with our blogs articles videos and books <coughs> i'm Egberto willis as host of politics done right all right folks so uh, please consider getting the book but anyhow it is time for me to start my ask uh, and, and so what i want to say first of all is please if you are on youtube please click that join button become a part of our uh, youtube pdr posse Otherwise, please go ahead and go to politicsonright.com slash YouTube if you're on Facebook, if you're on any other channel. Please, please, please go ahead and select uh, politicsonright.com slash YouTube. Alternatively, we also need patrons. Please go to politicsdonright.com slash patron. Patron is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. 
P-A-T-R-E-O-N, politicsandright.com says Patreon. And of course, the best, best thing that we love is PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. And uh, if you want to get our books, it is politicsandright.com slash books, politicsandright.com slash books. Now, there is an all, before I go to the all-encompassing one, politicsandright.com slash store. If you want to get our hoodies, if you want to get the different things that we have, uh, face masks, all that good stuff, cups, you can go to politicsandright.com slash store, politicsandright.com slash store. And of course, for if you are just it's like, Egberto, you have all those links. I, c- I can't remember those links. Just go to politicsandright.com slash support politicsunright.com slash support. Folks, we, to, to continue doing this, we do need your support. We really do. All right, let's go back to you. And, and, and thank you for, for the support in advance, but please uh, help us continue what we're doing. All right, so 1619 is an example of capitalism failed to serve humanity. Investor paid for that voyage and its captain was acting as their agent. He could have taken them back or set them free in good place, but all would incur a cost for the investor. Hmm, does that hide a root cause, the class system? Bruce, you just hit the magical thing that I think I mentioned yesterday, that capitalism is the perfect form of abstraction of evil. In other words, if if the tenet of the stockholder is that the, the executives that work for the corporation that I own through stocks... Or if their if their goal is to maximize profits at all cost, then let's forget the government regulations for now. If to do that is at all cost, me as the stockholder, I own I own a piece of stay. Let's say Exxon, I own a piece of Shell, I may own a piece of uh, 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 Nabisco, I may own a piece of uh, uh, Frito Lay, or any one of these things. Right? I own a lot of these things. All these companies' goal is to make sure that I make a lot of money while sitting at my pool, right? They're abstracting whatever they have to do. Pay low wages, pay slave labor, work people till they bleed. They, I am abstracted from all of that. I go to my parties in a suit. What are you doing? Oh, that beautiful Exxon building downtown that the workers can't get into the penthouse to see how beautiful Houston is from the things that they built that they can never take advantage of. You see, we have been learned, we have been taught to take so much. We have been taught to devalue ourselves so much. Do we need to have a super rich class to have a beautiful skyscraper? No, we don't. But our economic system dictates that we do because we want some to have more than they could ever spend in a lifetime so that we have those who are able to work for us at all costs. Nobody deserves the pampering unless all of us get the pampering again. But here it is. Unless all of us get the pampering meritorious with the work we are willing to to do. Example, Bruce, you're a learned engineer. You're a learned scientist. You were working your butt off in your office. You were working your butt off doing all these calculations. Norm as an an engineer was as well, running and working, doing the work that they have to do. Now, somebody else may want to uh, party all night. They want to work at McDonald's and party all night. Of course, you're entitled to more pampering than the other person that didn't want to do the amount of work that, so that they can play bigger. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a system that inherently, inherently takes from people. So what system that is not prone to crimes against humanity can replace capitalism? Free enterprise, uh, capitalism degraded to free enterprise is the answer. With, and degraded to free enterprise mean very strict laws of how these things operate. And also you have to, and by the way, it also requires a very informed population. Let me give an example. People always talk about, we want democracy everywhere. I'll be honest, to be honest, human nature tells me that democracy cannot work with an uneducated person. Let me give an example. I am hungry. We have a lot of seeds, corn seeds, etc. 
We have the last bushel of corn seeds left, but I'm uneducated. And the person who is the farmer who runs the show, he says, I am sorry, we cannot use these seeds to feed you because the seeds are for the next year's harvest. That hungry, that uneducated person can't quite see it. So they don't, they, 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 they are hungry, their belly is calling. They see the seeds, they want those seeds. In that case, a dictatorship is what has to keep that society alive, right? Because those who know, but in a, in a, in a democracy where we have an educated populace, then you can have real democracy because inherently people would do things to make the system continue. And that's the whole issue. That's the whole issue. And why is it that Republicans want Americans dumb? Because if you want Americans dumb, then you know that bushel of seeds that must be planted and cannot be eaten. You need a dictatorship to do that. The fascist to do that. Because your population is so uninformed, so uneducated. They don't know what's wrong. So they need the strong person. And in a patriarchal society, a strong man to run things. Progressives believe in strong education and in strong education and exchange of ideas. Now, we've been having a few backsliding progressives lately who want to stop kids from going to schools where right-wingers come in and have the same platform as progressives do. I don't buy into that. I think the best way to isolate ourselves from ignorance is to allow the right wing to come into our universities and talk and have those who know better refute them actively in real time because their words cannot stand up at all to truth, reality, honesty, and morality. That's what I'm talking about. So anyhow, folks, we're at the end of my time. Please remember to support us. Go to politicsandright.com. Click that join, or rather, please, if you're on YouTube, please click that join button. Please become a part of our PDR Posse. We need a lot more members, a lot more. We need a lot more people that contribute to the show. Please go to politicsandright.com slash PayPal. Support us. Please support us by purchasing our books as well. You can get our books at politicsandright.com slash books. And the all-encompassing way to support us is to go to politicsdoneright.com slash support. It's interesting because I got some advice earlier today. I was speaking to a friend who's doing NFTs and he said, Egberto, it is time for you to make Politics Done Right an NFT, non-fungible token. I am thinking about how that works. I don't know enough about it. And you know me about not knowing. So we're taking a look at it. All right. Um, I, I want to thank all of you for being here. I couldn't do this without you. The fact that you're here when you could be at the thousands of other, you know, faces and shows on the Internet. And you're here with me. Thank you. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.